Warhammer 40k Inquisitor Martyr is an action RPG that does many things quite differently than other action RPGs out there, even with the big 2.0 patch that made it a bit more streamlined. There is also a big new expansion that is about to hit the game in just a week that'll bring some new players in that are yet to understand many mechanics without reading the huge compendium or scouring the internet for information that really isn't even there. This video will be going through a few things that anybody playing this game or is thinking of picking up this game would need to know. All of this stuff is directed to newer players, but there may be something in here that you might not have known about if you do happen to be an expert, as I know there were some things that I learned pretty late into the game that made me feel pretty newbie. Without further ado, let's get into it starting with the most simple tip. Suppression is a very important stat to keep track of. If left low enough, you'll leave yourself vulnerable. This is your suppression bar. If you're unaware of what suppression is, it's the stat that either protects you or leaves you vulnerable to crowd control effects. Almost every enemy in the game will deal suppression damage with their attacks alongside their regular damage, which will lower your suppression. When your suppression is above 50%, you are protected and basically are immune to all crowd control effects, but once it reaches below 50%, you become vulnerable to slows, knockbacks, blinds, and other low impacting crowd control. But once it reaches lower than 20%, you'll begin suffering from the high impact crowd control effects like knockdowns, stuns, freezes, and etc. Allowing your suppression to get too low is probably a big reason for many of your deaths, so it's not a stat to be taken lightly and it's very important to pay attention to it, especially in earlier parts where you don't have the gear or passive points that allow you to keep that up and stay protected. Suppression is balanced to be around the same as your max HP, but can be lower or higher depending on how you build. There's many item stats that you can roll, and a whole passive skill tree that will help you keep your suppression high, and even benefit from having high suppression with extra damage resist or damage in general. It's also important to note that champion plus type enemies also have suppression bars with the same rules that apply to you. Crafting is extremely important with the tech tree, modifying, and forging. Just like any other action RPG, looting and choosing which items to equip is a huge part of progressing through the game. But Inquisitor Martyr gives you many tools to help you itemize for what you're building with its crafting system. Unfortunately, you don't start off with the full extent of the crafting system, and you will need to spend a bit of fate to unlock it via the tech tree. The left side of the tech tree is the most important, with the super important ones that allow you to actually reroll items to suit your build marked here in order of importance. This side of the tree only becomes effective once you reach level 50 and collect socketed items and is a big part of progression at that point, but basically useless before then. The single points are nice bonuses, but they are just extra quality of life and not nearly as important as the others. You're able to use any blueprint you find an unlimited amount of times except for relic blueprints to craft new items, but most important there is the modify tab. This tab allows you to reroll enchantments until you get the ones you want, and then reroll the numbers of those enchantments. This does cost quite a bit of credits and crafting materials, especially if you're adding to the crafting capacity, but once you create your perfect item, you are able to level it up a few times using credits and crafting materials to make sure your time and resources aren't completely wasted. I lightly mentioned sockets in this section, and, it, and something that comes alongside with these sockets are some called doctrines, which is a pretty complex mechanic that isn't explained anywhere in the game. You can really only learn about it via the internet. There is a wonderful spreadsheet by Steam community user Lyra Vega that I'll link in the description for you to learn about this, but I'm not going to go over it heavily in this video since it really deserves its own video, but this is a huge part of progression past level 50 that you really do want to keep an eye on. You can buy DLCs with fate, and some DLCs are extremely good while others are really lackluster and kind of useless. Fate is an important resource that you gain from completing nearly any mission, and from selling high tier items. Like we just talked about, fate can be used to research things in the tech tree, but another thing it can be used for is to purchase DLC, which isn't made obvious by the game's UI since it requires you to go to the main menu to even access this. Most of the DLCs are pretty worthless unless you're into the small stories or the cosmetics they offer, but there are a few DLCs that add some new and interesting mechanics that can really help you gear or level your character. The first and most important one in my opinion is Maelstrom of Carnage, which adds a new special mission where you slay as many chaos demons as possible so you can build up vengeance points while a giant orbital laser rains hell with 10 strikes, ending when the 10th strike hits and rewarding you with crates that have a guaranteed relic and artificer item. 
that can be salvaged for precious crafting materials. City of Suffering is another one really similar to this format, but in my opinion goes on for way too long and isn't nearly as fun or rewarding as Maelstrom of Carnage. Another DLC worth picking up is Forgotten Arsenal, which adds a bunch of missions that when completed open up a shop that sells a bunch of relic items for about 10k to 20k credits, which are amazing for gearing a new character or updating your gear while leveling. A lot of other DLCs add priority missions which reward you with things like tarot cards. If you go to the tarot card menu, you can see which DLCs really reward you with which. All of the DLC tarot cards aren't really the most useful thing, only giving you things like extra glory and influence that, that you don't really need. Speaking of tarot cards, tarot cards are a super important thing that you need to be using, and you need to know which ones you should be using and how to unlock them and level them up. While any tarot card combo will be helping you a lot for general leveling, it is important to know which tarot cards you should be using for your build, and knowing what kind of items you want to farm and what kind of mods rolled by the tarot cards will brick your build, and make the mission unplayable. If you're looking for higher XP and credit rewards, remember that the all reward bonus from tarot cards will affect that, so try and use cards with those high values. Speaking of credits, it may seem that at first glance the Onslaught is the best for credits with a 100% increase to credits reward per level, but in reality, Perseverance card is the most efficient for credits with its increased chance for intels that sell for 200k each. Tarot cards get more and more powerful per level, and you level these up by collecting the tarot card items, and then right clicking them, and then it will give you experience towards a random tarot card. Once it hits 10 at first, you'll be able to spend credits to level that up, and then you rinse and repeat until it gets to a high level, which may take a very long time and is completely RNG dependent. Check your weapon's damage type and make sure you're building for that type. I may just be the only person stupid enough to do this, but I was building heavily in a heat damage while playing with a graph gun, assuming that because the graph gun has a heat bar, it deals heat damage, but to my surprise, after reading the ability's information, the graph gun only deals physical damage. This tip is a pretty simple one, but still extremely important since you do need to know which type of damage you're doing to scale with passive points and items. Also note that the armored and heavy armored stat that you see on enemies doesn't only affect physical damage like most games, but reduces all types of damage. It's important to know this since a lot of weapons in the game have an armor breaking or armor bypassing skills, and if your main weapon doesn't, it may be a good idea to slot in one as your secondary for the tougher missions. It's important to know what to sell, what to keep, and what to salvage. Credits are a super important resource, probably the most important, used mainly for crafting, but there are many other important resources that you have to collect, such as crafting materials, archaeotech shards, void shards, song codes, and many consumables, and the general gear itself. It's important to know what you should be selling, keeping, and salvaging in order to get the best resources that you need. And while this formula will be constantly changing based on what your current needs are, I'll tell you the general rules that I've been following when it comes to selling, salvaging, and keeping items. Mastercrafted and rare items are pretty much useless, even when it comes to crafting materials, unless you are really desperate for the low tier materials. But with the auto loot turned on, you will rack up a bunch of these to where it's worth mass selling them for some nice profits. Artificer items can be salvaged for ancient mechanisms, which you do need a lot of for rerolling artificer and relic items, but if I have an abundance of them and I'm desperate for credits, I do sell them. The main thing that you will make money from in this game, as mentioned before, is intels. Intels drop pretty often, especially if you're using the Perseverance Terror card, usually getting an average of 1 per mission, selling them for 200k credits each. In my experience, Intels aren't really worth running themselves, unless you're out of Void Shards for Void Crusades and you are really desperate for a mission on your level. Speaking of Void Shards, they're a precious resource that you want to hoard as much as you can and never sell them, since they will allow you to open up Void Crusades, which are the most rewarding content currently in the game. Archaeotech shards are something that you will want to hoard even at lower tiers, since you can craft them into higher tiers, but if you ever are desperate enough to sell them, remember that every single tier has the same 5000 credit value, so it's much more efficient to sell the low tiers. The same goes for Psalm codes, but I've never actually sold one of these, since they are a priceless resource that you want to hoard like another type of currency, since you can use these to activate so many builds and some of the most powerful buffs in the game. 
Artificer blueprints are really good to sell for 20k credits each, especially when you already know the blueprint. But even if you don't, you'll barely ever find yourself crafting artificer items late into the game. So there's the 6 tips that I came up with that are super useful to know when coming into the game. If you are a veteran and know some more information that'll help people, let us know in the comments. I hope you guys are enjoying this game as much as I've been. The 2.0 update has been a great improvement, and I'm really excited to see more coming out from Neocore, especially with this new DLC coming out. So thank you all for watching, and I will see you later.